Everyone, thank you for coming to the Hedgehog Preview webinar. This is an exciting milestone for us because this is marking the first availability of our new product called Hedgehog. And we'll be talking not just about Hedgehog as a product, but how it's going to fit into what we are doing and what we're working towards. So, um, firstly, you know, I want to give a quick overview of where we're evolving as a organization, as, as a company. Our tagline this year is DevOps for the enterprise. And what that's, what that's meaning in this year and the next year, we're going to be focusing a lot on providing not only the software tools that you're familiar with, but also training products and services as well. Uh, some of you may have already seen or certainly will be seeing and hearing about some of the seminars that we'll be doing, not only on our products, but on things like NuGet and other DevOps things as well. We found that these are absolutely essential for us to help organizations achieve this DevOps concept. But by and large, where we see ourselves fitting as an organization is helping organizations support their DevOps tool chain and other advanced delivery processes. You know, ever since we started talking about Hedgehog, I've gotten a lot of emails from folks just sort of asking, and, and, and so, so some of them are you know, asking, you know, so what's happening with Buildmaster? What's happening with your product line? And what I want to first do is really give, is share with you where we see our products going. Um, you know, not right away, but this is next year, the following year, and uh, down the line from there. What we're going to look to do is have the three products, ProGit, Hedgehog and Otter be the primary flagship products that support this concept of a DevOps tool chain. They'll be, you know, they'll solve a lot of features, but they'll be much more focused at performing the specific things that they're designed to do. Now, of course, that being said, we plan to have a suite of other products as well. So it's more than just supporting this DevOps tool chain. Buildmaster is going to continue to be built. Uh, it is still in active development. It actually shares a whole lot of code between all of these other tools as well, but its design philosophy and principle is much more a continuous delivery with build automation as well. We're also looking into some interesting new products and potential acquisitions that is going to further our build automation line in ways that everyone is familiar with and enjoys the way that we're doing build automation. Um, maybe those will be free. I don't know. That's coming soon and down the line. Other or, otherwise, we're continuing to build out smaller, single purpose, and most importantly, free tools that help uh, you support DevOps and other workflows. We talked a lot about ROMP uh, in the last preview webinar. UPAC is something that certainly ProGit, it's, it's, uh, it's a tool that you use with ProGit, but other repository vendors are starting to support the same format as well. And we're also seeing a lot of people implementing this format in their own product line as well. Romp DBA, that's another product that we're going to be announcing and developing soon. It's going to help you do database changes using Romp technology. And something still to be announced uh, down the line is something to now start helping you manage your licenses and all the different instances of your Anita tools. So you have a centralized dashboard of all the dashboards. So you can have multiple Progets, multiple Otters. Buildmaster, all sort of sharing the same, uh, you know, same centralized management. That's that's really where we're going. And, and today, a lot of the focus is, of course, going to be on Hedgehog. But, you know, what I want to do is cover what we mean and why we're building the tools in the direction that we're doing. And a lot of this goes back to really defining what DevOps for the enterprise is. And um, when we say this, this enterprise DevOps, it's not implying DevOps the way that you see Netflix, Etsy, and a lot of those other high tech companies doing. This is technology that, you know, this is DevOps for companies that cannot afford and quite honestly aren't as high technology. While they need DevOps, they are not streaming videos. They're not uh, a social networking. They have a lot more compliance and regulatory requirements that they need. 
the way in which this is done in these very large organizations is this concept of autonomous teams. We'll be talking a lot about that uh, in future webinars and future content, but basically what it really does is it allows an organization to break itself up. Uh, you know, these huge, huge companies, you know, 500 plus on the engineering side and more, allowing the business units to directly interact with these small groups. So, you know, a business unit, for example, may want to feature request, instead of having to go all the way up to their chain of command and then all the way back down into a massive release process, they can now certainly start interacting with these smaller groups to request changes. This, this idea is nothing really new. This is something that has been, uh, you know, since the days of Agile, 20 years ago, there's been talk of microservices, different microservice architecture, and it's taken a long time for both the business and for application architects to think of how to do that. So one of the things that we continue to see, DevOps is a newer way of moving this, of moving towards Agile, but the biggest thing that we see across all of our customers and folks that we talk to are how do you migrate an, um, legacy applications? You can't just throw away 20 or 30 years worth of business logic and applications. Also, the whole, ver you know, by the time you build a new application, a new version of .NET is out, a new version of Node.js is out. Oh, this acquisition wants to use Scala or some other tool. And the, the, the big challenging is all these different teams, even within the same technology framework, have completely different opinions on the right way to do things. This is something we have seen organizations try to go centralize and dictate the way that things go. We've seen organizations uh, allow every team to do things chaotically. None of them work out really well. What we found by and large, uh, you know, not just recently, but over the course of the past 10, 20 years is that packages and the concept of packaging is a way to deliver small applications in a very, very uniform manner. And with this, we really see that packages are something that's at the center of a DevOps type of workflow. Now, packages, it's, it's just an analogy, right? When we think about what packages are, they're nothing more than zip files. All they have, you know, there's three types of them as well. It could be third-party software that needs to be installed. This goes back 20 more years in the Linux world. MSI files, those are also packages of sorts. The In recent years, we're seeing components used by developers, things like NuGet, uh, Ruby Gems. You know, they're on about 10 years old now. And more and more, we're seeing a lot of the vendors, ourself included, encouraging you to use a packaging concept for your own applications. And this is this is an interesting shift from the concept of build artifacts because a build artifact is it's a zip file, it's a static set of files. The only difference between packages and artifacts are packages have contained within them a manifest file that describes the contents. It could be XML, it could be JSON. All it is is it's a name, a version number, and some other basic information that describe the format. This is really, really important because as you start building your and breaking your applications and software portfolio into smaller components that different teams can interact with, you really need a consistent format for managing the applications, even if they're completely different. PHP, ASP, doesn't really matter. They can all be put in a zip file with a manifest that describes them. <clears throat> This is why we see ProGit as being something that's the, you know, where our tools come in. ProGit is the place where you put all of your packages. Uh, that's why we call it Universal Package Manager. Of course, it has all of your, you know, uh, you know, NuGet, NPM, Maven, all of these developer libraries, as well as machine code ones like uh, Chocolatey. What's important is the ability to start storing your own applications and your, you know, putting your own applications inside of a package and keeping them in ProGit. This involves a little bit of a thinking shift because you're now taking your building applications and then just storing them in a package manager. 
So how do you actually end up doing this? Well, this is where we have the universal package format. And basically, this is a extremely stripped down and simplified format for putting your own microservices or whatever you want to call these small uh, packages that describe your applications. Um, the existing packaging formats like NuGet, you see a lot of folks moving towards NuGet uh, for putting their files in. It's built for .NET. It's just not something that's great for your own applications. The idea with the universal package format is it's that is it's the thing that lets you package applications the way that your organization needs, and it's extensible to have organization-specific metadata so that there's a packaging format that you can extend. Now, I know a lot of you are familiar with this, but just to, just to run through it again to give context, really, in where Hedgehog is seeing the world and how Hedgehog is going to work. So first, you know, what we've got is this concept of just this application we'll be working with, which is just called accounts, just a very simple calculator, right? Um, it's just a zip file, and it's got this metadata file in it called uh, upack.json. Nothing but the files and the description of this, the version number, the name, and a very simple description. Hedgehog will take these packages and deploy them out to your server. The idea is that developers will, through either manually from Visual Studio, they'll do it from the command line, or they'll have a build automation server like Jenkins or something like this, push those into packages, and then from, from within Hedgehog, you go and start deploying those packages to servers. In its most basic design intent, this is what Hedgehog is all about, is deploying packages to servers. Of course, as soon as we say that that's what it does, we run into the classical problem. By and large, developers have, when you just want to deploy a package, developers also need to deploy specific infrastructure configuration, such as an application pool, a website, and then instructions on how to deploy that. Operations people just can't let the developers do it themselves, which means they're the ones responsible for doing it. And then automation runs into these classical problems that we've seen happen over the past 10 years with release automation. Of course, the centrally managed release automation tool, this is, uh, this is what Buildmaster is. Uh, one of the challenges that the develop is the tool is the only thing that does the deployments. Uh, you can give developers access to these configurations and give them a test instance of Buildmaster, but it's not something that they're going to easily be able to test and run on their own machines or as part of a CI workflow. That makes the deployment code and configuration code you know, one of the last things that need to be tested in a faster release cycle. I've seen a lot of users in Buildmaster start having uh, this automation tool simply run the scripts that uh, the developers put in their you know, source control repository. Maybe it's a PowerShell script or something like this. Deploy this uh, artifact, then run this script. I've seen a lot of other deployment tools as well do this as well. The developers write the script and then it, it gets run by the tool. Lots of problems. If you do it, you, you'll, you'll know them as well. Containers, totally different solution, but that uh, opens up a whole new world of problems. This is why we built Romp. Romp is the way for you to package these components, but also the infrastructure configuration and deployment code. It allows the devs to create, test, and run these locally. Operations can now look at exactly what needs to run before it's run, validate these, these uh, configurations, and it's built-in documentation. And the best thing is ROMP, the command line interface tool, lets you deploy disconnected. This is how developers can test and run these infrastructure configurations on their own workstations, or they can run it in a container or in a virtual server. It allows you to make very easily disposable environments for your applications by having this disconnected application package. So, raw packages, just as a quick refresher, it's the content, just like I showed you before with the universal package, uh, the manifest, the deployment uh, script, variables that tell how these deployment uh, and configuration scripts run, and credentials that the package may require during installation time. They're universal packages. 
uh, which are the zip files that you host in ProGIP. The content and configuration are simply more files. Here's what this accounts package looks like, and on the right is certainly the deployment script that we're doing. It's using Otter Script. And if you're familiar with Buildmaster, if you're familiar with uh, Otter, or if you've started playing around with Romp, you'll know what our DSL is all about. It is a really easy to use scripting language that is not all too, it's quite limiting. You know, you're not going to be doing arithmetic in it. You're not going to be, you know, doing a lot, but that's the thing that makes it powerful because you can just drop down to a general purpose language anytime you need to. The simplicity of it is what allows us to have these visual editors. Now, certainly, this is not the sort of thing that you're going to get at the command line, but this is exactly what we are going to be building into Hedgehog. This is the editor that allows you to go back and forth, or from uh, visual mode to text mode, and this is exactly the thing that uh, is in Buildmaster now. People love it, and in Otter as well, and this is going to be a core part of Hedgehog as well. And, of course, because of the tight uh, integration with PowerShell and shell scripting, you've got lots of interaction with existing libraries of PowerShell scripts. So anything that you need to do uh, when, you, when you look, how do I deploy this? If it's not obvious from OtterScript, just type, how do I do X in PowerShell? And you can do that in OtterScript by just running the PowerShell command. That's the big difference is we've, is we've learned it's very important to allow you to use the existing resources of PowerShell scripts. Now, of course, these ROM packages, in addition to these built-in scripts, very importantly have package variables. These are the things that the developer, so whoever is creating the package, the author, is the one who's defining what is required to install this package. You can very simply just look at a package using the command line, and all that essentially does is look inside of the JSON file stored inside of the package itself. It's a little bit more advanced than the key value pairs. You know, you can hide the values from logs. You can have, a, you know, you can have required indicators and some typing as well. In the command line, this isn't as important, but as you'll see once we jump into Hedgehog, they start to really make a difference. Credentials are of interesting thing as well. They're like variables, but for secrets. Now, when you're using ROM packages with Hedgehog, these credentials are things that you securely store in Hedgehog. They are inaccessible from average users. You have to have the appropriate permissions to edit and manage these secrets. And it's not something that you can easily log if you're a package author. So, for example, if you wanted to write out the production connection string, it's not going to happen unless you really, unless the administrator of Hedgehog sets it up incorrectly. Credentials are always secure. So, what I want to do is show you a very quick way to do the quick deploy concept. I have my uh, uh, instance here. What I've got are uh, two pieces of software running. Um, this is just running on my local machine, so it doesn't have really much test data. This is ProGit. Um, this is a simple instance of ProGit. And what I, what I did is I created a universal feed. Um, now, uh, inside this, in, inside this universal feed, I, I called it dev, you know. Uh, ProGit is that repository that allows you to create any number of feeds. I'll create, uh, another Teams feed, for example. The idea is that, there's sim that these feeds are simply ways to organize and store different packages and have completely segregated package repositories or warehouses. So inside the dev feed, I just have two very simple packages uh, or two sets of packages, I should say. Uh, one of them represents this highly distributed accounting system. The other is this, the simple demo that I'll use. But anyway, you can just see it's just it's a package with lots of different versions: 1.6, 102, 101, you know, all those things. In in ProGIF V5, what we'll be able to do is actually browse inside of the package without having to download it and see that this is actually a ROM package, and and things like that. Uh, more to come once once ProGIF 5 is out. So I just want to do this to show you what our configuration looks like inside of uh, even inside of ProGIF. So I set up ProGIF. Now we've got Hedgehog. 
So you'll notice a slightly different look. This is what our next generation uh, UI is going to look like. It's a little cleaner. Obviously, the icons are going to start seeing some new icons come out as well, but you're starting to see how this looks quite a lot like all of our other products. What I did in Hedgehog is I've already set up a single server, and the server is just local host. I could add dozens of servers if I wanted uh, uh, across the world or anything like this. They could be uh, Windows servers. They could be Linux servers running SSH. I could use the Anito agent. Um, I didn't configure server roles, which are a way of grouping servers or environments, but those are certainly things that you can do to model a complex infrastructure. For demo purposes, just, it's just this, this computer and that's it. I also set up a package source. A package source is basically just a pointer to a feed in ProGit, and that's really it. I could create another package source that points to the second feed that I created called, what was it called, uh, another team's feed. I'll do that just by copying this endpoint URL, creating it inside of ProGit here. Let's see, saying that it's an anonymous feed. And like that, we now are adding more package sources. Hedgehog uh, generally works best by having package sources set up to pull these packages. And the other thing that I set up ahead of time was a resource credential. All it is is just the, you know, something I call the counts ID. It's my username and pat. It's my username and password. It's prevented from being exported, and it's now stored securely inside of Otter or inside of Hedgehog. So the only feature that we have in version 0.1, this technology milestone, is the quick deploy. So I'm going to show you what quick deploy does. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a wizard here, but what it does is we start by selecting a package source. So the idea with quick deploy is it allows you to take one of these packages in ProGit and quickly deploy it to a set of servers in environments and roles. So I want the dev feed. I want to select a package. Here's the packages that are coming over from ProGit. We're going to do accounts. Okay. And then I can pick the version that I want or the latest version. Let's just pick the uh, version 1.6. Um, what Hedgehog has done is it went inside of that package. It went to Kroger and it, it said, give me that these metadata files. And it's now prompting me for the variables that are stored inside of this package. I'm going to type this in. See websites, accounts. You know, that's the, the root folder. Now, I could have certainly created a system variable that's used as an input to this. But for demo purposes, I'm just typing in directly to this deploy, uh, quick deploy feature. Credentials. Uh, the identity for the accounts demo app pool user. This is, again, more package metadata saying these are the things that I require to deploy this package. I need a place, where's the root of the website, and where's this going to go? Now, I only set up that one accounts ID that I showed you. Now let's keep going down this uh, wizard here, and you can see the plan. Now, uh, the, the, the preview version only will allow you to use the script that's embedded within the ROM pack, but what we're doing is we're previewing it. We're saying, what's this going to do when I actually deploy this package? And you can see, make sure the directory exists. Create an application pool using these credentials. Uh, ensure this accounts uh, website exists. Ensure the, the, con the, the package contents go to the website folder, start the Apple, start the site. Super, super simple. I pick where I want this to go. Now, what's interesting here is if I had set up dozens of servers, I could just start typing all those servers in, and it will automatically deploy it using all of this configuration to those servers. Or I could say, you know what, put this to the integration web servers if I had set up those roles. But for this quick demo, you know, we're just seeing localhost. And lastly, what we have is a deployment schedule. Uh, in this case, I can schedule it or just do it immediately. So all that said, let's do a quick confirmation and uh, hope that this, uh, that this live demo actually works here and see what happens. Um, what it's doing is just basically going through running that deployment pen really quickly and uh, like that, before I could even finish saying it, the execution was completed successfully. So let's take a look at some of the details here. What we're seeing is logs that relate exactly to the uh, operations that we specified in that deployment plan. And in this case, uh, this is telling you precisely what's happening using the local agent. 
here's how we're ensuring it. We're getting lots and lots of details, detailed logging that's broken down. We can download a log, we can export it, but what we're getting now is centralized logging of packages. I can also go right back and start seeing what are the executions that have happened. Here's a history, this is some of the testing that I did and the history of this as well. I see, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but if anyone has questions at any point, please don't hesitate to uh, ask. The question that came in here is, can you set up variables in or in Hedgehog? And yes, absolutely. So what we what we what we will be able to do? Um, maybe it's in this version. Maybe not. Yeah, we could already start putting in variables attached to the server. So what that means is that the deployment plans that is being run by these packages can simply pick up the variables that that are on those servers. For example. I could have just deployed this to five different servers and had the pat the website routes specified in the server variables itself and had and all of that would have been resolved at runtime. On the same effect, we can put variables on roles. We can put them in environments as well. So all this multi-level variables allows us to have, you know, allow consistent deployment using very, very simple text variables. Um, so, by and large, that's what Quick Deploy does. Now, we can go and look at the results of this. So, I have IIS here, and you can see that it went and created accounts web exactly like it said that it would. Uh, if, I, if I go and refresh the list of sites, it created the accounts website as well. Uh, certainly, we can uh, browse the, the files here, and you can see it dropped all of the contents exactly in the directory that I specified, websites, accounts just like that. So that's how simple this package deployment is. Now, since this is a package that's installed on the machine, what's important to note is that we can use any of the tools that interact with universal packages to query uh, what packages are installed. In this case, I'm going to use romp, but I could just as easily use upack. I'm going to say romp list packages that are installed. And uh, whoop, romp packages list is the appropriate command. And you can see right here, romp, the pre-release version, of course, is telling us that accounts is installed. I could hook up today, Otter, to my local machine, and Otter will give me a list of all of these packages. It's only accounts, but you can start to see why having this centralized package repository and having many different ways to install packages on the same server and then report back the results of those starts to allow you to have lots of options and a little, you know, centralization with decentralization. And, and so what I want to do is walk you through what our vision of Hedgehog is and what the features and essential components of Hedgehog is, is going to require. So first, we mentioned that a core concept of Hedgehog are packages, right? Uh, this isn't just Hedgehog, this is you know, this is the center of this new way of doing DevOps, right? Zip files that have your application, maybe they have that deployment plan and instructions and also the manifest files that tell you the variables, the credentials, and all those other sorts of things. These are things that are stored in universal feeds. Now, when, you, when Hedgehog references these universal uh, packages, what it's also doing is, is asking ProGit for a cryptographic hash of that package. So what this means is that if somehow, some way, I go back into ProGit and re-upload, you know, maybe I have the permissions to replace a package. Maybe somebody tampers with the package on disk. Who knows, right? That, crypt that cryptographic hash will make sure that whatever package you deploy in the lower environments, once you, tell, once you say, Hedgehog, I want to deploy this package, it's going to always treat it with its cryptographic verification and fingerprint, and it'll start giving you warnings and saying, look, you're saying you want to deploy accounts web 1.6, but this looks a lot different than what it did months ago or a month ago or whenever the last time you deployed it. It's because of that cryptographic verification. This is just the simple concept of packages, but this isn't nearly enough to handle any real complex organizational requirement. 
Inside of the uh, packages, as we mentioned, is the deployment plans. These, if you think about this, this is more, this is a if a package is just the box where you put the things, the deployment plans are the instructions on how to install that package. They're easily stored inside of the package, but Hedgehog allows you to centralize these plans. Say that you have a whole set of consistent packages and you don't want to keep including that same script in the packages. That's why you store it in Hedgehog. And as we'll, you know, as you'll see in different milestones of Hedgehog, these scripts are stored in, you know, they can be stored in versioned Git repositories. So this code, it's not like it's just stored in a centralized Hedgehog. It's actually versioned in source control alongside some of your other uh, software applications as well. And of course, we talked about Otter Script. That's what that's what you that's how Hedgehog deploys these packages by running a deployment plan that's specified in Otter Script. The next important concept to keep in mind is that it's not nearly enough to take uh, packages and spin them off the servers because real world applications have a bunch of related packages that have to go at the same time. Let's take, for example, a bundle of related packages. You've got an application that, for whatever reason, has got the PHP front end, and then another team is maintaining the Node.js middleware, and they just they got to go at the same time. What the package set allows you to do is bundle those packages together, deliver them to the same logical place, to the same logical time. For example, let's deploy these packages to our testing stage. Well, that means in test, that go, one goes to the test web serve, and the other package goes to the test API server. When it goes to production, different sets of servers, but conceptually the same places. The other nice thing about these package sets is they allow you to have yet another place to share variables across your packages. Pipelines. So this is the next big concept. Uh, in, that, that we'll be having in Hedgehog. So package sets are the bundle and the things that get delivered. The pipelines are the route that gets the packages from point A to B, finally to production. They effectively model your software delivery process. At each stage and each stop along the way, at testing, this is where the deployment happens. When this deployment happens, it can be uh, with automated checkpoints there could be manual checkpoints any of the things that that your organization will require these are the things that you're going to be able to model with hedgehog for example human approvals you can have different groups say before go before we're allowing anything to go into test developers will need to make sure that it passes on integration of course you can set up deployment windows and you can set up automated tests that let this whole thing go from integration all the way to production. It really depends on the package set, the rules of the organization, and how you want all of these things to go together. <clears throat> Releases are another big concept inside of Hedgehog. So if you think of the package set as a group, of related packages, what the release is, is it's a plan that allows you to take changes to go from testing all the way to production. These changes aren't necessarily implemented in a specific package set yet, but they're the reason that you're creating a specific package set. Uh, releases are something that model a more complicated delivery process. Uh, the more complicated your application requirements get, you may need to start using release planning to allow simultaneous development of different sets of changes at, this, at different times. This is why you start creating releases because it allows you to have a self-service process. Developers or uh, whomever can go in and pick the release that they want to send to a particular test server or a uh, particular environment. That's what the releases do is they further facilitate the self-service process. And of course, more shared variables. Perhaps you're working at an early branch, a feature or something like this, in, or maybe a dev feed. All you need to do is just put a variable in the release change that variable as the release gets closer and closer to the dates and you can start you know uh, uh, using the different releases to accomplish different things now uh, a good question came in and, and the question is you know 
are all of these things required to be used inside of Hedgehog? Uh, it's a great question. No, actually, one of the things that, you know, the first thing that we saw, which was that quick deploy, that is sort of level one. That is the easiest, simplest way to take a package from ProGit and send it out to a whole bunch of servers or just one server. The next thing that you do is you create a package set and push this through a pipeline. So that's sort of the second style of workflow. The package sets are things that you template. You can have common groups of packages, so it's package names. Releases are the next more advanced level. So progressively, as you use the software, the, the more mature features start coming in. You'll know that as you start learning how the features work and how they all come together. And of course, projects. Projects are the things that bundle all of these uh, together. So inside of a project is where you'll put your plans, pipelines, these package set templates, and even other projects. So this, this uh, nesting ability gives you a chance to start making projects of projects and allows you to use projects to not only be a home and associate, uh, a place to associate package sets and releases with, but you can create projects just to store pipelines. You can create projects for just shared sets of plans or templates or anything like that. Projects are, they serve as a variable uh, scoping attribute. Projects serve as an organization and also a privileges thing as well. You will, with projects, you'll be able to say this group of people are able to deploy to this environment. Another group are able to do this. Projects allow you to do that segregation. By and large, you know, that's, you know, these are the core features of, um, of Hedgehog. So that being said, uh, I want to say thank you. I'm going to cut it here. Um, last last note again, uh, please do, uh, if you have any interest, uh, send me a note. Uh, fill out the Roadmap Review Board. Um, I'd love to get your feedback, but uh, thank you, everyone.